from the United States, massive big boy George Bear and Bo Weiniger from Oklahoma. First they practice on the Australian Golf Club course in Sydney. They loosen up for their open Australian engagement, the first Masters tournament for professionals ever staged in this country. Weiniger is a man without nerves. He is the scientific swinger from the American professional circuit. Bayer, the Seattle slugger, is one of the biggest hitters in golf in the world. In practice, he drove 386-yard first green at the Australian Club. Weiniger relies on science instead of brawn. There is great power in his smooth, compact muscles. Bayer, for a 17-stone man, is extraordinarily supple. On a blustery day at the lakes in Sydney, visiting and Australian champions meet in the Masters. Here come three gifted South Africans, smiling Harold Henning, an open stance player, and slim Trevor Wilkes. Notice how he keeps his hands very close to his body. Here's Gary Player, with his unusual grip and the recoil motion as he hits the ball. Among the 16 competing champions are 21 years old Australian Open champion Bruce Crampton and former Australian professional champion Bill Holder. Last year's Ampol winner Eric Kremen. Australia's Mr. Golf, Norman Von Nieder. 1956 Australian professional champion, fast swinging Les Wilson. for the slight forward movement of the left hip as Bayer turns on the power to hit into the wind. Here is a beautiful drive from Weiniger, followed by New South Wales professional champion Kel Nagel. Bayer was the glamour player of the tourney. Throughout the game, he held the biggest gallery. The day didn't favour accurate putting on fast, dry greens. At the sixth, Bruce Crampton putts well past the pin. Kremen, a deadly putter, misses this six-footer by inches. Crampton sinks a short one. There misses a sitter from 18 inches. The gallery eagerly notes the different actions of the players as they hit off at the seventh. Crampton drives into the rough and is most unhappy. The big fellow makes heads turn as he sends this long one screaming down the fairway. New Zealander Ernie Southerton clips this one from the edge of the seventh green right on the pin. There are plenty of near misses like this 15-footer by Kremen. A Sunday trader by Harold Henning tries to get in the back door. Veteran Bill Bulger, still as good as ever, attempts a 20-footer. We're at the 18th now and Gary Player takes his time with this shot from the rough. He pitches nicely onto the green but misses the putt, finishing three shots behind the winners. George Bayer is too strong with this 30-footer, but Crampton sinks a 6-footer to tie with Player and Kelnagel. Von Nieder played well in patches, but it is not his day. Bo Weiniger misses this 15-footer at the 18th. Ernie Southerton finishes two over par and shares the prize with that great stylist of the old school, Sam Richardson. Kel Nagel offers congratulations. Next 
day, the visiting champions play an exhibition at the picturesque, sun-kissed Roseville course with its groves of shady eucalypts. Let's study Trevor Wilkes with his inside-out action at the first tee. Wilkes, a short hitter, uses a wood, but Bayer chooses an iron for this hole which is just short of 300 yards. Crampton uses an iron. He must think he is driving on Ampo. Here is a Belgian who is known as golf's flying Dutchman. He is Flory van Donk, who stepped from a plane from Europe only two hours before the game. His partner, Bo Weiniger, hits off cleanly. Now comes Gary Player with his spectacular flat swing. It's an unorthodox action, but Gary hits the ball hard and straight. The game is on, and the crowd forms into two galleries to follow the players. At the ninth, Flory Van Donk hits from the distance and gets his ball on the green. But it was Weiniger's day, and he finished two under par to win with a brilliant 62. Player overhit this shot from the edge of the bunker at the ninth. The gallery holds its breath as Van Donk tries for this 12-footer. With exhibition and warm-up matches behind them, the players moved to Melbourne for the 11th Ampol tournament. They played on the glorious Yarra Yarra course with its Spanish Mission Clubhouse and also the Magnificent Gardens. Among the crowds were thousands visiting Melbourne for the Olympic Games. They rated the Yarra Yarra course the equal of any in the world. Flags on the scoreboard gave the tournament a true international flavour. A unique feature of the Ampol organisation was a scale model of the course, helpful to players and spectators alike. Melbourne in springtime, with the sun smiling on the soft greens of the silver birches and the tea tree scrub. A perfect setting for the richest golf prize ever offered in the Commonwealth. The game is on. Kel Nagel starts confidently, but crashes on the opening day. Player, little fancied at this stage, sets a hot pace from his first shot, but as yet doesn't attract a big gallery. Another early leader was South African Harold Henning. Les Wilson hits off. Len Woodward, a runner-up in the Australian Professional Championship, is on his way. Next comes Eric Kremen, who has played in every Ampol tournament since 1947. This is Frank Phillips, a future champion, who went overseas with Von Nieder and Bruce Crampton in 1956. Trevor Wilkes gets his first ball away smoothly. Ampol general manager Mac Leonard seems to be as concerned as the players as he follows the flight of the ball. Bruce Crampton, latest newcomer to the big time, has an air of determined concentration. Most of the players hit off with the number two wood, but Bayer uses a four iron. Wham! He socks the ball and earns a round of applause for a magnificent shot that lobbed on the green 220 yards away. Once again, the magnetic Seattle Slugger attracts a big section of the crowd. Here is Norman von Nieder again. He didn't win, but watch his putting later. With his old-type English swing, Ernie Sutherland, ex-England, ex-New Zealand, ex-Sydney, is now in Melbourne after some exits. Bill Holder is next from the tee. Here is the old 
old wrist roller himself, Ozzy Pickford, who has won six Ampoles and one Melbourne Lottery. Van Donk, who quickly proved himself a great player and favourite with the crowd, is suave and assured. As Ozzy Pickworth walks from the tee, the idol of Melbourne, placid Peter Thompson, takes up his stunts. Thompson is Australia's greatest golfer, three times winner of the British Open Championship. He admires his drive and so does the gallery. Weiniger, as usual, is debonair and dangerous, with ace golf writer Jack Dillon in the background. Yes, it had to happen, a left-hander and a good one. Kiwi Lily White Bob Charles, who downed Peter Thompson in the 1954 New Zealand Open. A big gallery quickly forms to follow Thompson and Weiniger. Norman von Meter chips onto the green at the 18th, but the ball lands eight feet wide of the flag. Bill Holder rolls a long one. The Von was in deadly putting form for the whole of the Ampol series. He sinks this one for a birdie. It must be his new glasses. New Zealander Southerland, still after his exes, sinks a short one. Then Donk again. He finds the green at the 18th from well back. Oh, oh, is Ozzy in trouble? No, sir. He was born and bred on Manly Beach and he blasts out with a beauty and then puts it where it belongs. Van Donk is unlucky with this shot, which robs him of a birdie. Watch the golf club flash in the distance. That's Peter Thompson as he lifts one to the edge of the green at the par 518. Peter steadies himself before he tries a long putt. His miss doesn't upset Mr. No Nose Weininger, who sinks a ten footer. Though needed this hole, it put him in second position at the end of the first round. Thompson sinks his putt at the 18th to finish the first day with 71, five behind player. Peter and Weiniger compare their scores with Weiniger on 73. According to Peter, the course needed a haircut. The scoreboard tells the story of the first 18 holes with player in front, a position he held until the end of the tourney. Player receives his reward for a fine day's golf as Ampol's managing director, Mr. W. G. Walkley, hands him a set of coffee spoons, opal mounted, for the best round on opening day. Dulled skies on the second day precede the rain which later washed out the tawny for a day. Before hitting off, Thompson and Wilkes practice on the wet putting green in the clubhouse garden. The 11th and 15th were tough holes. This is one of the few shots on the 15th that went past the flag into the bunker. Frank Phillips is in trouble at the 11th, but he blasts out. The 15th again. Wilkes gets on the green, five feet from the pin. Bremen tries a putt uphill.
Ozzie Pickworth tries for a 40-footer. It's in the shot of the tournament. Others aren't so lucky at the 11. Victorian Jack Harris just misses a birdie with this one. Ernie Sutherland, still fighting for his exes, tries to shoot from North to South Island and misses by the width of a Maori's moustache. Lenny Woodward sneaks this one in, but he's not too happy about it. Meanwhile, news of the tourney goes out to golf enthusiasts all over the world. At nine points on the course, Ampol officials collected progress scores from each of the 116 players and flashed them to other officials in the information caravan. Live wire Ampol executive Lex Brown receives some scores from an operator on the course. The scoreboard sign writer is kept busy recording each player's scores for every hole. Uh -huh. This looks interesting. Yes, it's the hole the gallery always plays exceedingly well. With its cluster of gay beach umbrellas, the beer and luncheon garden was the most popular spot on the course. Just look at that food. On the last day, the players played 36 holes because of a day lost through rain. Player still leads and an Ampol girl ties an armband number to his bag for good luck. Master of Ceremonies, Al Howard, calls the players as they hit off. Player, two points on Weiniger, is very confident. Pickworth is grim and serious. He's joined third with Thompson at this stage. Frank Phillips and his mentor Norman von Nieder are level, one stroke behind Pickworth and Thompson. Sensing a fighting finish, the gallery follows Player and Pickworth. At the ninth, Bonita plays a nice short iron. Thompson follows him. Replace that divot, Peter. Weiniger, fighting for the lead, picks this one clean. We're back at the treacherous 11th, toughest hole on the course. Crampton is lucky. His ball just clears the bunker. Van Donk takes no chances and gets his iron onto the green. It's not Crampton's day. He chips onto the green about 10 feet from the flag. The putt looks easy. Yes, it's it. No, it's gone past and curly-headed Crampton can't believe it. The 11th again with Thompson hitting up. He's safe. His ball lands on the side of the green, 30 feet from the flag. Weiniger shows him how to play this shot. With a magnificent iron, he almost lobs out in one. Thompson is still down on his luck as he tries this long putt. Weiniger nonchalantly puts in for an easy birdie two. Pickworth is still in there fighting as he makes his second stroke of the ninth. He's giving his gallery a run for their money. So is player. It's tense golf now with the pressure really on. Player gets onto the 18th green.
he nearly makes it with a 45 foot putt. The old wrist roller is in more further. Bunker trouble in this third round cost Aussie four strokes and second prize money. At the end of the third round, player led Weidegger by seven. He would have needed to have used a tennis ball to lose. As the final round gets underway, that grand sportsman, the Governor of Victoria, His Excellency Sir Dallas Brooks, flies by Navy helicopter from Flemington Races to Yarra Yarra. He lands on the fifth fairway where Mr. Walkley warmly welcomes Sir Dallas and Lady Brooks. This is an international gallery for the final hours. Meet Olympic visitor, Jesse Owens, one time world's greatest sprinter. On the scoreboard, four men work without rest to record the scores as they keep flowing in. Southerndon is still fighting at the 18th. At this stage, Crampton is well behind the leaders. Leader who finished equal eighth with Kel Nagel plays a good approach shot at the 18th from 50 yards to within 10 feet of the flag. At the 18th, Weiniger tries a long putt. Thompson tries a long one from 30 feet. Vaughn is right in touch. He was so pleased with his putting, he wanted to buy the 18th green from the club. Thompson ties with Kremen for seventh money. Weininger congratulates him. Then he carefully puts this one in to finish second and collect 1,000 pounds. <laughs> Bo remains unruffled as he strolls away to receive warm congratulations from Merriam Miller of the United States Olympic team. Chips onto the 18th within a foot of the flag. He sinks the putt to share 10th prize with Harold Henning. Back at the ninth. Player is in an unassailable position. He is taunt and engrossed as he strides confidently to the green. Pickworth seems a little melancholy. Frank Phillips tries for a long one. From the edge of the green, Player almost chips in a 45-footer. Misses with a 12-footer. The 
gallery moves off and Pickworth tells Gary he's home and hosed. The players pause at the 16th to welcome Sir Dallas Brooks, watching the last stages of play with Mr. Walkley. again. The gallery rushes the ropes to see Gary hit the winning stroke. The crowd give the young South African champion a grand welcome. Sir Dallas Brooks and Mr. Walkley join in the applause. Pickworth chips onto the green, but his ball falls short. The crowd swarms in now. Sir Dallas and Mr. Walkley move leisurely to a vantage point on the edge of the green. There, finished like a champion. He could have taken five strokes over this final putt and still won. But he puts it away from 15 feet for an eagle three. And the tournament is his. The crowd hails a tremendous performance by a 21 years old who only four years ago was on a handicap of 24. For Pickworth, the game is over too. He grazes the hole, then finishes off eight strokes behind player to share third prize with Jack Harris and Flory Van Donk. Thousands press around the dais as the man who created the Ampol tournament, Mr. W.G. Walkley, one of the greatest patrons of Australian sport, pays his tribute to Gary. This young South African is a great golfer by name and nature, a young man destined for fame in the annals of wonderful international sport. Sir Dallas Brooks pays his tribute. Gary's big moment comes as he mounts the stand to receive from Sir Dallas the Ampol Trophy and the check for £5,000. Gary tells the crowd that he prayed each night that he should win that he will use the £5,000 to wed the girl waiting for him in Johannesburg and to send his father on a world tour. For Australia, the Ampol tournament was a proud Olympic prelude. For Gary Player, it was fairways to fortune.